60 Minute Shit Show. Episode 37. 37, which is, it's like my golden episode, because I'm 37. For a while. For, for I'm going to hold on to it until it happens, okay? <laughs> I got like a month and a half. We got special guests in the We do. Today. My buddy, John Norfleet, a.k.a. Fleet. Hey. What's going on, man? <laughs> I, don't think Sorry, I, spoke, I, I don't think I ever spoke to you. I've seen you for years, because just being around Ben. Yeah, I, mean, I he, think I've seen you in the store every yeah. now. Yeah. Well, from the old store, or that new one. And, so. yeah. Fleet would come by the old apartment to play Street Fighter when you lived there. Yeah. So I definitely remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we've been well, in the same circles. Comic book expert? Uh, Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, your official title for uh, Wizard's Wagon is? So uh, the official title is uh, comics manager, but also co-owner. Yeah, nice. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a recent thing. Oh, yeah, wow. you guys uh, bought it Thank you. from Thank you. Fantasy Shop? No, no. from uh, who owned Wizard Wagon? Uh, man, I forgot his name. Uh, the uh, Ray Hartman. Okay. Um, if you know, he's he was the, he, the the creator of the Riverfront Times. Damn. Ooh. And uh, he sold it for millions. And uh, and you see him on like PBS. What's that? Uh, Donnie Brook. Not Donnie. Is that it? Donnie. I don't know what that shows in. But like, you um. You uh, there's some audio coming through. Yeah, it's crazy. What is that? I don't know. It's not me. It's definitely not me. I don't think. <laughs> is that of course me? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I pulled up the episode to figure out what episode we were on, there it is. I was like, I hear my I like, voice. That did sound it like that. So weird. Sorry, but yeah, yeah. So um, so yeah. I mean, so you've seen him around. He uh, he then went and did uh, STO magazine for a while. Okay. But um, yeah, last year, uh, late last year, summer, he uh, he was gonna get out of it, and so he uh, he offered it to us. And so my coworker Ryan, um, we got some money together with uh, with our brothers and figured it out, and now we own the store. That's so, awesome. Yeah, that's super awesome. Yeah, thanks. Congratulations for that. That's fucking. I haven't business business real estate in St. Louis has to feel pretty good. Oh yeah, you know, especially it's like, a, like a steak. You know, in that location. Yeah, it's like, a nice that's spot. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I invited Fleet here to talk about comics, a uh, topic very important to at least all of us in one way or another, uh, well, as a fan or as our profession, you know, a uh, Texas super fan with tattoos all over his body, seen all the MCU probably four times over at least. At least. You know, and, uh, uh, you know, Fleet selling them and making them sometimes, and then I'm making them and selling them sometimes, so... Uh, yeah, we all have different stakes in it. And I think regardless of the statistics, I think everybody's got different ideas of where the industry is, you know, like just based on, uh, your exposure to it. Uh, if, and when you go to the shops, you know, the people coming in the shops and then, you know, creating them, everybody's got a different idea, but, um, I will kind of want to start with, uh, so fleet reviews comics every week, right? New yeah, releases. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So do you have favorites of 2019? So far, yeah. I mean, I, I got a few. Uh, part of the the issue is is that I read so many comics now that uh, to you know to see what I want to talk about. Yeah, that it gets muddled sometimes. Sure. You know, for what I actually like and yeah. what I'm looking on at a technical level. But like stuff that's that's like kind of came out at the end of 2018, but really got its its run in 2019. Stuff mm. like Die. Um, oh, okay. That started in 18. Yeah, it was yeah. like November. Okay. 18. That was that was pretty good. Um, so D and D comic. Yeah. People get stuck in the game, like in it. Yeah, cool. they like they pull like a Jumanji when yeah. they're kids, and they come out two years later, but they can't talk about it. And one of them's missing, and one of them doesn't have an arm anymore. And then they just kind of go about their lives. And then like twenty years later, the missing one, his uh, his die comes back, and so they go back in the game, and everything's jacked up. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty it's pretty fun. And who puts so, that out? Is that Image? That is that is Image. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I read the first issue. Uh, didn't read the second one yet. I own it. I feel kind of bad about that. I heard it's, it's issue two is where it kicks two. off. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. I think it's it's one of the better selling books in the store. It has so many. Like each issue has maybe too many additional printings after it. So nice. Like, you know, I think issue number one has like five. Oh wow. Five printings. So that's neat. And then two and three. I think four had two printings. I think five actually had two printings. It always so. tapers, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, eventually, you know, people get that that taste. But it's just like how Saga was. Mm -hmm. um, 
when it, it came out, you know, it, it, it had like a kind of like a little slow start as, yeah. as retailers started pushing that one and and then it caught on word of mouth. And so then you got second printing, third printing and so on like that. So, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, also, I'm a fan of uh, Naomi from D.C. OK, I don't know that. Um, one. So that one's by uh, uh, David F. Walker and uh, Brian Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis. Yeah. And they um, it's a story about this girl who. She lives in this this uh, this small town, and uh, Superman and Mongol had a fight there, like for like 17 seconds. Like <laughs> I guess they were punching each other across the the country, and so she missed it. She showed up right after it happened, so she was kind of obsessed about it. And then Superman came back the next day to help clean up, but that kind of sparked this thing in her, this big mystery, like because uh, she's adopted, and she's a black girl, she has a white family, and she um, and she's like. No one ever told her, like, who her parents were and all that. And so it sparks this thing to where she's like, I, I got to be special. I have to be from somewhere. Why do I have this connection with these heroes? Hmm. And each issue, you get a little bit more of it. So with the fifth issue that came out, like, last week, two weeks ago, um, you finally get the story of, of what's going on with her. It's really good. So. Hmm. That sounds pretty different for DC. Yeah, yeah it does. It's, uh, it's a part of, um, I think it's part of their Wonder Comics thing. It's kind of like a like a little mini imprint mm -hmm. that I think is still canon to everything else that's going on. But yeah. It's just kind of aimed at, at like uh, young adults, I guess. So. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Because it sounds to me like it, it would be like an image book. Somebody that would read some some somebody that wouldn't read everything besides the big two would yeah. like this. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It doesn't, it doesn't really feel like a DC book. Like, well, cool. it, it, it eventually does. Okay. But, okay. Um, as it gets into like... Uh, I'm intrigued. Like the the Thanagarians and um, and all that the, the Hawk people and all okay. that. It's like it's like deep into the DC cosmic. Sure, stuff, so. that's awesome. Uh, what issue are they up to? Five. Okay. Five out of five out of six. So. It's just gonna be a one time thing. I don't know. I think uh, I think they might incorporate her later on into okay. into more stuff. But cool. For now, I don't know. All um, right, Naomi. Yeah, it's pretty it. good. Um, I guess uh, a couple other ones. Uh, the life and death of Toyo Harada. That's from Valiant. Hmm. Um, Toyo Harada is like this. I don't know. You ever read any Valiant stuff? Actually, I don't. Okay, so not not intentionally. Uh, it's just yeah. yeah. No, it's fine. I mean, they <laughs> you know they they you know they fell off for a while and then they were brought back. Uh, you seem to. I think I recall you ago. saying that they picked up a lot of steam last year, huh? Yeah. 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 They they started. Um, they getting like getting like bigger writers and stuff like that to okay. come in and, and bigger artists. Yeah, and so um, this one's about kind of like the I don't really want to call him a villain, but I but he kind of is the villain. He's kind of like the Lex Luthor of of the world, but he's not his his intentions are good, um, but he's but he's kind of terrible about it. He's but he's <laughs> also this. They have these things called psyots, which are like. Basically, they're the valiant version of mutants, okay. and he's one of the most powerful ones. Mm -hmm. He can, he can teleport. He can mind control you, fly. Um, they just showed that he can, he can yank your soul out of your body, <laughs> and slow down time, and, and have a conversation. Okay, with so him. he's so, God. Yeah, functionally. Right. Yeah. He, his powers <laughs> activated um, during the during World War II uh, when the when the first atom bomb dropped, and, okay. um, and he he put up a force field. And he saved himself, but it wasn't big enough. His mother got disintegrated because mm -hmm. they're like almost right up on the impact. Right. And so he spent his time growing up, and he's trying to like just save the world. But when you're when you're functional, when you're when you're God, yeah. Like how do you, you know how do you go about that? Mm -hmm. Where does morality stand? So he's made these deals with like there's like this this alien that it's like I don't know. It's like a it's like a like an obelisk with tentacles and it's possessing this lady and he's like yeah you know I'll, we'll give you some some babies and you can and you can do whatever you want with that and she's like yeah and then and then well, <laughs> well i'll help save humanity but he's like you might just eat us too it's like maybe so <laughs> but yeah but this is that's this really is, weird this is kind of like his final story which okay. is kind of also like a like a peak of what they've been doing since valiant came back hmm. so that's cool so that's a lot of fun um it's another good one. Uh, Outer Darkness. Um, I think it was also from. I think it was from Image. Uh, it's about uh, this kind of like Star Trek, but imagine if space was magical, 
Okay. And, um, space magic. <laughs> yeah, but like more more than like Star Wars. So there's like uh, there's sectors of space. It's just like this is a demon, and if you nice. fly through it, you might get possessed. Um, and then the crew, there's like uh, these guys who do um, theoretical math hexes or whatever to, to keep stuff out of the ship. And then if you die, they can they can recall your soul, put a new body if you're insured by companies and stuff like <laughs> that. And um, that's interesting. So the crew gets this new captain. The captain hates everyone on the crew. The crew hates the captain. And by the end of the first arc, most of those people are dead. So hmm. nice. What's um, this called? Outer Darkness. Okay. I like that. Yeah. So, so those are things. I like so demonology like. And, yeah. and stuff like that. Anytime it, uh, I don't know. I, did, I, did, I like the uh, Judeo-Christian uh, theology. Sure. Like the whole demon angel thing. I like, you know, like um, the Dan Brown books and stuff like that. It's yeah. all very interesting to me. Anytime, anytime a story's got demons in it, I don't know. I'm just incredibly intrigued. I don't know why. You like so you like demons. I, I do, <laughs> I do, and I like when stories put like the angel aspect on its head and turns them into assholes or something, sort of like uh, Constantine or Hellboy does. I, I mean, I always inv- uh, enjoy depictions of of hell for some reason. Yeah, yeah, me too. Hey, I love it. In books or movies. It's or, like a, it's like a challenge. Who can make it the more the more awful? We have no idea really what it is. Right. So right. it has it's to be super to be all- creative. Yeah. It's always it's always super creative when someone does depict hell. Yep. More interesting than depicting heaven because that just seems like cookie cutter to me. Yeah, it's it always kind of easy, you know. Yeah. It's clean, white, it's bright. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, everyone's wearing a nice suit or something like that. Yeah. What the hell's like white pianos? That could be outside. White yeah. pianos. Yep. Just all the all the keys are white, which is confusing. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you saw the new Hellboy, right? Yeah. And that was they went to hell, right? Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it wasn't was it, like was it, it wasn't, cookie cutter. It wasn't. No, I mean it was hell. You know, like fire it was like yeah it was like mites and yeah yeah <laughs> it was cool though okay but it wasn't as cool as like other depictions of hell i love the constantine depiction of hell it's pretty good that was really windy <laughs> like, it was a city you know like it was it was where you were just fucked up yeah which yeah. is pretty like the upside down yeah um yeah. what dreams may come oh man that was a really a good, good depiction movie. of yeah. hell i haven't seen that in long enough to not remember what their well version of hell was. you know the robin it was robin williams movie right but it was based on richard matheson's book oh shit it, yeah he wrote that book he also wrote i am legend Right. Um, so and the road. No. Who wrote the road? McCarthy. Uh, Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So it was. <laughs> it was as dope. Like the sea of bodies. Mm. It was like a sea of bodies, and they're trying to grab them and bring them down. And it was just constant agony. It looked like some place you did not want to go. Nice. For sure. That's but without, the key. Yeah, without man. being like the typical fire and brimstone yeah. type. type he loved his wife, man. Yeah. That's a that's a trip. <laughs> that's real love. Yeah, it is to yeah. go through hell. I mean, see, I don't like yeah. romantic movies, but I love that movie because it's just the way they told that story. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was all painterly and crazy. Yeah, yeah, I need to watch that shit again. I guess. Um, my favorite of the year is uh, Murder Falcon. That's another good one. That book's got some heart, man. I can't I can't sell it to anyone, but really, yeah, really? just be. Uh, there's one enough, guy that not I enough metalheads that, come through the door. There are, there are, but they're not. You know. They come in looking for like old stuff. You know, Interesting. You know, they'll buy they'll buy like a Kiss comic before. They'll Show them book six because it's yeah. a dude with like black and white makeup. Yeah, that, on dude, his... that dude. I can't say his name. Right. But like, yeah, that dude was amazing. Pretty badass. It was like um, uh, it was Swedish. It was like, yeah, I, I yeah, Hamden or something like that. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a J in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so I don't want to spoil it. Did have you did you read it all? Or, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so I didn't read the last one because I haven't come to pick it up yet, but. Uh, there's uh there's a one of my favorite page turns in recent history uh freaking floored me when uh when he grabbed his hair yeah, oh yeah and that's all I'm gonna say yeah <sighs> yeah I wasn't see I thought I wasn't I, ready for that because I, I I thought without again without spoiling I yeah. thought that that was kind of done with right and then yeah. it's like oh it's like oh he's been doing all this uh, yeah so yeah you know that was uh yeah, so for the for the listeners, I might have talked about it already, but it's uh it's a it's a uh, a book about a, a rock band that summons mythological creatures to fight demons, and the better they play, the better they fight, and uh, but it's it's got a lot of heart too. So you know the the lead guy uh, had a wife, and they broke up, and uh, and there's a lot of like death and sadness, Man. and each book has a little bit of sprinkle of drama in it with with action and falcons and mastodons and all sorts. It's fucking epic. Yeah. And I love Daniel Warren Johnson a lot. Like I liked Extremity. It was really good. But See, I the, can sell it to people who read that. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. But that was also hard. It it it, so. it was, but I think this was the crescendo for him. Yeah. This is this is taking it to the next level. I like that book a lot. And I've uh, taken a lot of inspiration from his art. And uh we we've now 
communicated a few times on Twitter, which is always a good feeling. Yeah. The guy's really friendly. Every time I mention him at a convention, everybody who's ever talked to him is like, oh, he's the nicest guy in the world. So he's got a reputation for being stupid nice. That's cool. I hope yeah. it lasts. And he has a band called Bruticus. Yeah, I listened to some of the <laughs> some of this because each each uh, issue has a track yeah. that you can you can download for free and listen to. So yep, yep, yep. That's um, a cool little cross promotion. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. Um, and he puts like sheet music in the in the books, and the, so fans will like record themselves playing it and send it to him. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty badass. Um, tech, do you read anything new in the last? Twelve months. I know you read White Knight. Yeah, White Knight. Yeah. Um, Doomsday Clock. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely like surface level comic book fan, so like I'm not into the deep stuff like you guys are. Getting the big stuff though. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So um, but you know what's funny? I was gonna ask you this question. Do you see a lot of people going in and buying older stuff? So I actually so um, I do have an amount of like backish like like older stuff, uh, some 60s stuff, 70s, and yeah, it, it just kind of depends. Um, although it surprises you who you know who's looking for what because sometimes you'll see like like a 14 year old it's like yeah i want to i read all this x-men stuff from the 80s i was like well yeah I, I got a bunch of it um you know or then or you'll get like this there's this uh this lady that came in she had to be like 60 and she uh she asked about some some incredible deep cut character <laughs> and i was like give me a second and she's like, no it's okay if you don't know about it so I'm like, oh, hold on <laughs> <laughs> like you asked about you asked about a background character and like like two team books like hmm. like let me see if I if I got it I didn't have anything but, yeah. Um, yeah but she I don't know I don't know why she did that that was that was actually messed up hurt a little bit <laughs> yeah she's <laughs> testing you yeah I and, think and she already knew the answer yeah, yeah. like she needs to go to a big ass emporium style place. That yeah, just has like, yeah, like I, thousands of long boxes. Yeah, because yeah. I got I got like nine long boxes. Right, right, right. Like it's not like we're we're starting. Like yeah, it's like a third so. of the store, yeah. not the whole store. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah any think, any uh, change coming to that? Are you guys? Is it is the ratio of the store comics uh, going to stay the same? Uh, you think? That's probably going to grow. Oh, cool. Um, I think I think it's one of the comics. Uh, like I guess we'll talk about this a little later, but it, it's also kind of the most consistent thing that. Um, that sells in the store because even if, if new stuff isn't isn't really hidden, you know, graphic novels and all that stuff, people still want to read these these old stories. So they're gonna always sell those. Nice. So if anything, we'll we'll get more graphic novels. Mm -hmm. um, I think our comics, like our new issues and all that, will probably stay about the same, which is which is a lot anyway. Yeah, I mean it's a so, whole wall. So yeah, it's good enough. You tech, you're about to say something though. Oh uh, yeah, I was just gonna say. So the reason I asked that question about the old comics is because like I think this last year I read more old comics that I just missed, um, like sure. the in Infinite. Um, Infinity Gauntlet. No, no, the, oh. I've I've already read right. that, but the Infinite uh, Infinity. I'm sorry, the oh, story, sure. the Thanos story. Um, a lot of what else? Secret Wars. I caught up on that. Um, I've been reading a lot of what ifs lately. That's cool. Like I'm really into the what ifs. About to do those now too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like even the stuff I've bought in stores, I've, I've the last thing I bought from Wizard Wagon was the Watchmen because I never had it. So I kind of like been getting all the old stuff that I mm -hmm. always wanted. Man, that was a dense ass book. I know it's not really topical. That that book was hard to read for me. It yeah, took I, multiple sessions. I almost I almost skipped the pros the first time around. Yeah. I was like, oh. But then I saw something. Like, Man, I think I need to read the pros too. So I yeah. went back and read all. Yeah, that. I I went about half through way halfway through the book and I wasn't reading the. Uh, the black uh, yeah I hated the pirate stuff yeah what was it called black something uh, pearl black adder or something like something that or, I don't know uh, yeah. and then I ran into a friend they're like bro you gotta like yeah. it's most of the yeah and so I went mm -hmm. but and that seems to be it looks like it's gonna be in the HBO show they're covering that in the HBO show you know because there's the flat the pirate flag was in the trailer you know what makes me upset about that is I for uh, Halloween last year I went to New Orleans as Rorschach yeah. and I'm walking down Bourbon Street and I can't see shit right <laughs> so I try to cut these two little holes in my mask and had the show came out earlier, everyone in the show has huge eye holes. Yeah. I would have just fit right in. I would look looked normal as shit, <laughs> sure. and I would have been able to see. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, those, those weird-ass chrome masks the police wear. Mm -hmm. Or no, the detectives wear the chrome masks, and the police wear those yellow bandanas. That show is dripping with style, That's, man. I can't wait. I can't wait, too. Um, uh, so you're reading these back issues. Uh, didn't you just subscribe to either Marvel? Marvel Unlimited. Unlimited? Yeah. And then I do was, you do Comixology? I did for a while, mm -hmm. um, but then let it go. And yeah. like now, if I I use Comixology, if I want to buy something, like because Marvel does Comixology Limited, have a subscription? It doesn't. Does they it? no, they do. But it's like this. They have like this big pool of free comics that you can read if you're subscribed to it. Oh, uh, okay. So, so but, yeah, it's not like free reign. Yeah. Gotcha. So um, yeah, every time if because the way Marvel Unlimited works is it's not like 
this week's new issue. So oh. it's, it's like backed a little bit. It's, well, yeah. I think so that's how the, the DC one is too. It's like a year back. So yeah. Damn. Yeah, you still gotta. Yeah, you still gotta. So it's it's for back issues only. Really. Yeah. And you're not is, gonna stay you're current. Get, you're getting those full. You're getting those full stories. Though. Right. That's, that's what it is. But you're not staying current. No. So you're not gonna know what anybody was talking about. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's smart, I guess. Right? They yeah. don't want to. They don't cut us out completely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Because you don't want. Because you don't want to hurt. That's comic the first time anyway. It. Yeah. It's the first I heard of that. I always thought it was no. concurrent. Mm. Um. Uh. So, it's interesting that you've got a long history with comics, Mister Supreme, uh, and a, a, dev, a pretty devout fan. You know your shit when you're talking about the movies with all our past guests and stuff like that. But, um, and this is probably going to align with a lot of people. You don't, um, me too. Shit, I don't read Marvel and DC very often. I don't read. I read maybe one or two titles every couple months. Um, uh, can you not read comics and be a fan of comics? It's an interesting question. I kind of don't think you sh- you can. <laughs> like, it, like, if you really were a fan, you would. Yeah. You just would. Yeah. Like, if you have toys, comic book character toys, why would you not want to know the backstory? Which I think is a, a comment I said last time we talked about this. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you not desire the backstory? Why would you not desire the history of it? Yeah. I just think that's a problem we've got right now. Like they're selling all these, you know, Marvel T-shirts at Target, and nobody's reading comics. I mean, I can't say nobody. We've got some statistics to look up, but, um, you know, I, I know in my circle there's just a handful of people that read them, but everybody's going to the movies. Everyone. Yeah, I, I think I think you. Well, so I think there's there's layers to that because like I think you can you can be a fan of comics, and not have you know not have read a comic and. You know, uh, an amount of years. So I'm in. I'm in some fan groups on Facebook where that's clearly the case. Um, <laughs> and so I, I even I just stopped talking to these guys though because I can't. You, you can't know, stay if current. You, yeah, like, if you're not current. Yeah. You don't know. You know, if I'm, I'm trying to tell you something I'm like this, you know, this is they they went through and and addressed how this power works and all mm-hmm. that. But it's like, no, nah, man. Batman Falcon can't everybody. be black. It's like uh, Captain can't yeah. be black. It's like you missed. Well, you've missed this. Of you course know? you can. So, um, so yeah, stuff like that and. Um, and I don't know it's kind of stressful, but uh, but yeah, I, I think that you know you have other avenues like the like the cartoons, um, you know, like the like the the DC animated universe from the '90s to mm-hmm. from Batman animated to to the Justice League Unlimited, and you know, I heard um, two guys at uh, Club Fitness the other day arguing about uh, Rob all the different Robins, and one guy was definitely less of a fan because he didn't know who Tim Drake was. Ooh. He was trying to explain it. The guy kept guessing wrong. Like, oh, they got, no. <laughs> yeah. So, but. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think you can be lapsed and still kind of be a fan. But then, there, but then you, but you should at least be familiar with with a comic. But are you like, really a fan though? Like, you can't say I like comic books and I don't. You don't read comic books. Like, are you a fan of Marvel, or just you a fan of movies? Right. Oh, well, and and I guess that's a that's a fair question, especially now. Um, in the last 10, 11 years, mm-hmm. um, where you do have uh, strictly movie fans who like those versions. Like, like I, Kim is apeshit over Wolverine. Just just lost her mind over what was like, like top and didn't want to watch Logan because she you know, knew the ending or yeah. whatever. Or didn't want to watch it again after watching it, you know, because sure. of the ending. You know, so like it's but has probably never read an issue of Wolverine. That might actually be for the better, though. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, because, you know, because sometimes sometimes what you get and this, like it's it's weird giving Fox praise for for their depictions of of mutants especially, but Wolverine you know they most of those movies were mov- Wolverine movies anyway, yeah. so at the very least they got a lot of him down even though there were some some vital changes like yeah he's not supposed to be that handsome he's not supposed to be that tall stuff like that <laughs> um, he's I mean this I mean Wolverines aren't necessarily big you know large animals right and they're in their own level of the of the animal kingdom right so there's, there's some stuff going on there but uh but yeah but you get these characters like that or like like the mcu captain america is probably the the ideal version of captain america um same with iron man um i think i think robert downey jr uh embodies iron man better than than writers do because you know you, you get different voices and stuff like that for for writers to sure whatever every series you got a different and, version right. of if you really yeah. like analyze it though so does the mcu with the different directors like the iron man under favreau is different from the iron man and under the russo brothers different than that's the definitely true whedon yeah. iron man like they they're completely different yeah 
Huh. I, I, yeah, I never I analyzed it, so I, I wouldn't I have thought of that. Because oh, yeah. even, because yeah, even you know, Cap's different from you know, in the first one from from then when the Russos mm-hmm. kind of took over the Cap stuff, and then the later Avengers movies. They went from Boy Scout to to whatever Renegade, he is. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he had that beard <laughs> and uh, and and the brown hair for a while, and uh, you know, he had his his star was was scratched off and everything like that, and hmm. he was a tough guy. Like even in Endgame. You know, he's, you know, if you look at, like, Age of Ultron, where he was, he was telling people, you know, watch your language, you know, <laughs> to, to, it's like, oh, it's America's ass, right? There. You know, like, yeah. that's like, that's a complete let's get change. This son of, let's get this son of a bitch. Yeah, right. Oh, you wow, know? yeah. And, he, and you can even see that, like, I, I guess that's, that speaks better to the movies in general, where everyone in Endgame is, is almost wildly different from they were uh, from the first Avengers or their debut movies. And That sounds like something that would have bothered me had I thought about it. Now I think about it, it's probably going to start bothering me. No, I shouldn't. I think, <laughs> Dude, I, think it's, I think it's good. The difference between the weed and Tony Stark and the um, Bruce Brothers is night and day. Hmm. It's yeah. pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty drastic. Okay. It's, it's just the way. Just the way's writ. The way he's written. Yeah. He didn't feel kind of more like a like a villain through uh, weed in. Like yeah. he's, he's more reckless. He was very very much an asshole. He was trying yeah. to get the Hulk to to turn into the Hulk on a ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just because. Yeah. Just Interesting. Because. Okay, and yeah. this is the same guy who uh, changed his entire company, his billion dollar company, to for peace. So, like, definitely different characters, almost. So yeah, so I mean, so yeah, going back to that, I think I think that you you can be a fan, but you should. I, I feel like it's worth it's worthwhile to at least pick up a comic and read it from start to finish, and and you know, especially if it's something in a franchise that you like. You know, like you said, Kim likes Wolverine. Maybe not Wolverine specifically, but mm-hmm. like maybe like go to Jason Aaron's Wolverine and the X Men mm-hmm. and see him as that that teacher role. Yeah. Or, or see him, at, you know, they just Why brought is he him so back. short? <laughs> <laughs> right. But, you know, but he's less ugly now because some of that influenced the comics. So he's he's not a disaster. You know, he's not like like Danny DeVito is probably closer to what Wolverine should be than Hugh Jackman. So. Yeah. So. That's so funny that they got a petition out. For that. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's pretty funny. I would. Yeah, sure. Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> if we're gonna get what if stories, let's just do it. I would. I would. Pay, I would watch a, a little short movie with. Fuck it'd be so yeah, I would funny. Lo- I would love it. Actually. Um. So looking at some numbers. So we talk about a lot. Uh, you know, are the movies influ- uh, influencing sales? Are more people coming to shops? So I actually talked about this today in yeah. the store. Um. Yes and no. So at least at least from my experience from the from the the multiple shops that I've been in since the since the beginning of the MCU mm-hmm. um, to now, there was I'd say earlier on the first five years or so, there was definitely a surge. You had people who were watching the movies and mm-hmm. were coming in and buying the comics, and um, but then over time, you know, I started to see a waning on that. So like. I think an uh, example I love to use is the Academy Award winning Suicide Squad, right? So oh, it's always, <laughs> I gotta put that in front. <laughs> so, like, that movie uh, made, like, I don't know, $800, $900 million in, in worldwide box office, something like that. It was, it was high. It's one of the higher Damn. DC, That's crazy. DC movies. Uh, it's probably like 800 But, like, that movie made so much money, but that translated to zero in terms of the comics and the team that they used in the, you know, in the comics at the time was mostly that team, you know, it was Boomerang and Harley Quinn, Deadshot, um, Croc. I don't know if he was in there. I think, uh, cause, uh, King Shark was in there at the time. I'm but bringing like, him you, on the second one. Yeah. That's, I'm super excited for yeah. that. But like, what's the Latino's name? Um, uh, Diablo, Diablo. Diablo. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was in there for a while too, but like, but yeah, but like, seven hundred forty-six point eight million dollars in the box office. Yeah, seven hundred. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's and a people lot. Like the, shit, people love to shit on that movie. With a budget of one seventy-five million. Oh yeah, they did so good. So they, they, it's a good movie. I yeah. mean, it's a good. That's why we got to look at that. That's like, that's like the second highest uh, DC um, movie, or at least in that in that junction from the Zack Snyder zone. Like, I think Wonder Woman is above it, maybe, and Aquaman definitely has made like a billion dollars. Yeah. But, um, and then like. But like yeah, it's above Batman v Superman. It's above Man of Steel. It's above marketing you know, for that was great. Over Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, well, from the second trailer on, yeah, yeah. Actually, <laughs> uh, B Batman v Superman is it higher? Is the highest? Is it? Yeah, this this I couldn't find. A, I typed in DC movie list ranking list. So according to sales, 
and it gave me one with all comic book movies. Okay, that's, um, that's good. But yeah, but they they brought in they grossed four hundred twenty two million. Batman vs Superman did. Um, just Justice League did two seventy eight, and Suicide Squad to two sixty seven. So I guess. So that's what I mean for for a team with no one. I guess Batman was in it for like you know like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like I mean that's pretty good, and uh, and so definitely like even even like like what Ben was saying, the marketing was was fantastic for they started once they started putting more color in the and the posters and all that stuff yeah you know people were were stoked about it even i saw it early and like the audience clapped like twice in the movie like there was a point after um <laughs> so this is what's crazy to me so like uh when deadshot killed all those plant zombies or whatever people like there that was, was there cool. was a plus it That's was a, a cool scene. moment right yep and then when the movie was over, people were applauding. And then, you know, then the movie came out and the next weekend. People were like, man, the movie sucks. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, like, but, but these people were excited about it. And I think that That's this is weird. also kind of a wave of, you know, people, people choose a side. Yeah. You know, it's like anything white else. Now. And it's, you know, it's, it either sucks. You know, it's either trash. Yeah. Don't unfollow me. Or <laughs> it's the best movie ever. I think it's a lot of it is trendy, too, now. Like, Movies will pick up a certain type of trend of people saying it's trash, and then yeah, I think people who wouldn't even normally have an opinion or have that strong of an opinion was to say it's trash because everyone's saying it's trash. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. No one wants to be the outlier. Yeah. Or, or you know, there's a lot of plenty of people out there that say that, that love it. So you you've got to have the people that say it's trash just to be, you know, contrary. Yeah. Plus, people want attention. So, <laughs> right. You know, if someone yeah. makes yeah. a Facebook post that says. In game was trash. They're gonna get forty comments because people are gonna like, no, it's not. So yeah, I'm not saying that Suicide Squad was good and people were lying because that's well, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, it just wasn't still... a good movie, and I wanted it to be <laughs> really bad, and it and it just wasn't that good of a movie. Even though I liked the characters, yeah, I, I think there's, there's, there's good aspects in there. I, I thought like his it. laugh was great. I thought he was a good <laughs> yeah. That last yeah, he yeah. was one. Of, he was he he that character could have been my favorite Joker. If they yep, yeah, he deserved another movie. Oh. I think. It's it's an amazing like twenty seventeen Joker Lamborghinis and gold teeth come on yeah like a yeah. legit mob boss yeah. type dude yeah um all right so overall North North American sales um so let's the MCU started in what year is it twelve years ago it's a so that's two thousand seven two thousand eight two thousand eight yeah uh, overall North American sales two thousand eight four hundred and thirty six million uh, two thousand eighteen five hundred and sixteen million. So it's going up. That tracks. Yeah. Uh, however, <laughs> um, it peaked in well, 2015 was 579 million. 2016 was 580 million. 2017 was 522, hmm. and 2018 was 516. So looking at the chart, it spiked and is now it's dropping again. Yeah. So what came out three years ago that made everybody? So uh, Ultron and so uh, Batman vs Superman. So yeah, those movies came out. Um, That's like Max Nerd. And then that was peak. People were excited for yeah. all that, like anything it could take. But even you know, even like, but you you had that. But like 2015, what were the numbers for 2015? 2015, 579, second highest number. It's that was yeah. The and next then, year was basically this. Let's just call it the same. It's like not even a million off. So. 2015, you had you had the, these movies coming out. You had you had big stuff because uh, Marvel and DC they both were kind of doing, you know, uh, DC was was changing up what they were doing with like Superman and uh, Marvel was ending their stuff. Secret Wars was coming out that summer, hmm. and um, so it's like the end of everything. And you know they wiped away the universe, and when it came back at the end of 2015. Everything was was fresh. The timeline was kind of reset a little bit, you know. Doctor Doom, his you know, he had a clean face and he was trying to be a good guy. And <laughs> Miles Morales was in the six one six now, and right. and you, you know, you had all these these big ideas that were going on. But at the same time, you had the the complete absence of the almost complete absence of the X Men, um, and a huge push for for Inhumans, right, uh, going on for for Marvel and DC. Plenty of people were trashing that online too. Ooh, yeah, for good and, reason, you think? Uh, well, it, it's kind of like you know when, when you when you take when you take two similar concepts, you know, the Inhumans and the Mutants. You know, you ask someone on the street, "Hey, can you two Inhumans? Can you, you, know, can, you <laughs> right. can you name two? <clears throat> Maybe. Yeah. You know, but but mutants, most likely not. Yeah. 
Uh, but, but, and you can thank the Sh- Agents of Shield maybe a little bit for that. Well, so yeah, so it was part of a big thing. You yeah. know, you know, Disney didn't have the mutants. You know, Fox had them. And they were just, and no one will ever admit it, but like, but it was very clear that they were they were toning down the properties that they didn't have. Like they canceled the Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. um, which is which was would have been their longest, you know, one of the run, longest running Marvel comics, and um, you know they, they they canceled that. Anything that they didn't have the movie rights to, kind of took a backseat. And uh, or they were killing all their their primary characters. Wolverine was dead by, I think, in 2015. Mm-hmm. Cyclops was dead. Um, uh, what? Uh, I don't know. They they killed Nightcrawler, brought him back. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's like a lot of like a lot of stuff. Then like, there was that, that whole uh, Spider-Man Doc Ock mix-up bullshit. Right. The, that so was infuriating. The, the su- yeah, the Superior Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, which I loved. Did you? Uh, so much. But I like the doc- I like Dr. Octopus, though, so that's okay. kind of leads to it. But it's also like, yeah, they killed Peter Parker. Right. And they had some guy in there who, who was, you know, walking around his body doing whatever. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of creepy. And I think that went on for like 31 issues or something like Damn. that before Peter came back. And um, and did whatever. But, you know, but I, I think that, that a lot of stuff was being tried um, in 2014, 2015. Mm. Um, and then, and then DC kind of followed suit. I think by 2016, they also rebooted and did their, did their rebirth stuff. Yeah. Was 20, yeah. It's 2016. Maybe. I don't know. There's so many of them. Maybe out. 17. So, well, there some of their issues are in their seventies right now. And okay. It's like bi-weekly, but I'm not trying to do the math on that. So yeah, it's probably like two years of that. That's 52 weeks um, a year. So, so so yeah, so you have this stuff going on, and then the movies are just growing and growing. You know, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy came out. I think that, I think that did maybe like a, like had a to billion do something or something like that. Like yeah. you know, and you had uh, yeah. Where's you got that up still? Where's Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh, okay. I'm looking at the uh, the one I previously stated was the uh, gross box office. Mm-hmm. So this is overall gross. Which one do you want to hear? Overall. Overall, uh, Guardians. Volume two is higher than volume one. Interesting. Uh, on the list is twenty fourth, uh, with uh, seven hundred and seventy three so, million. Pretty good. I mean, it's impre- like for <laughs> for a comic, you know, a like, C list team. I have a two, yeah. I have a two part question for you. Okay. All right. Uh, the first part is, if a movie is really good, does that affect the comic book sales of that character? Uh, sometimes. So sometimes. like, let's say Infinity War, when that came out, Infinity Gauntlet just was flying off the shelves um marvel wasn't even prepared for it so <laughs> so uh so you couldn't get it for like a for like two months after mm. the movie came out but stuff with thanos in it jumped up because everyone's like oh you know thanos he he has the right idea and he's like thanos <laughs> is a little different in the comics um, <laughs> yeah, he, just, he does not death, he does right? not care about balance and everything yeah. <laughs> he's just he's just here to murder you yeah. literally um, a mad titan yeah. yeah, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. You know, it's just, yeah, the death, and that was even like Mephisto's like, hey, you should uh, you should kill everybody. Maybe <laughs> she'll like that. You know? <laughs> that's that's kind of what went down. <laughs> um, and so yeah, he took advice from the devil. So it's like, right. But um, but then you you have stuff like Wonder Woman. So Wonder Woman came out. They made a ton of ton of money. I there were no there were no reasonable translation of of, of positive sales for the could you, comic. Could you possibly imagine why? It was a different book. Um, you know, like, uh, like when it came out, because usually when stuff comes out, like like the lead up to, you might see some people coming in, like, like with Shazam that came out. Uh, no one was buying it until the movie actually came out. Okay. And then for the for the next couple of weeks, people were buying it. And now it's back to, I'm selling the same numbers I was before, which yeah. is like, not a lot. Right. Um, so, so there's so stuff like that where it's it's in the mind. Now with Wonder Woman, you know, Wonder Woman was playing for so long, and it you know just kept making money and money and money. And it's not a it's not a matter of women don't read comics. It's women women absolutely do read comics. And actually, I feel like the demographic in my store is almost fifty fifty. Nice. But um, but I think that it, it has to do with with how the character is being de- depicted sure. and what's going on. And the thing with Wonder Woman is, I think when that movie came out, her her origin just changed again, and it, it's always in flux. I think that the last the rebirth story that's going on now is that she is aware that her origin, that her that her origins are always jacked up. She well, she wasn't sure why, but it's like 
you know, I was a, I'm, you know, I was made out of clay, but now I'm, now I'm not made out of clay. Zeus is my dad. Maybe he's not my dad. And, <laughs> and there's an awareness going on there. And it wasn't just with hers. Other characters too were also aware as, as DC started to kind of blend the, the two, um, the two histories, the two major histories that have going on, the stuff that happened before Flashpoint and the stuff that happened after Flashpoint. Some of the characters have memories of both right. timelines now. Um, and I think that, you know, he had stuff like that going on. And so someone on the outside who just saw this movie about, you know, Wonder Woman, you know, doing all kinds of work in World War One, they come and read this book and nothing to do with that and there's not yeah there's nothing going right. on it's 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 stuff like she doesn't even look the same so so how about um how about outside of the big two you've got uh umbrella umbrella, umbrella academy uh yeah so and deadly class so umbrella academy definitely had a had a jump in readership to the point dark horse just couldn't keep up nice um they they would do they would do these rush printings yeah and i haven't been able to get it in my store and like see that's I ideal man that's beautiful it's, it's I love that. like you know there's there's like there's like this small window where it's like oh yeah you can order them no you can't <laughs> yeah it's like oh, I missed out so, so I maybe have Wonder Woman has right. been in the zeitgeist for so long that nobody felt like they had to go read it right whereas people like, were like ecstatic about Umbrella Academy anything yeah. I have I'm selling puzzles and <laughs> uh, decks of cards and stuff like that yeah. and it's not even it's not even a Netflix show so it's just like, it's purely the, the comic stuff mm-hmm. but the thing about Umbrella Academy also is is that you know, um, it always it always sold reasonably well because yeah. um, of because of Ger- the Gerard Way connection. You know, he and for all the My Chemical Romance fans out there, okay, they'll come in and they'll buy everything that he has in the sure. store and leave. So you have that, but then to have this 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 wild story, that honestly is, is pretty tame compared to the comics. You know, but you have this guy, you know, big hairy dude, and you know, someone can make you do whatever by by saying I have a rumor and. This guy's throwing knives, and this kid's time traveling old man in a kid body. You know, like you, yeah. you have this, you have these crazy things going on. Uh, Say, so hey, I mean, you kind of want to check it out, um, and you see that you know the hairy dude is his head is on a blue gorilla, and <laughs> uh, and and you know, uh, what's Cha Cha and uh, what's the other guy? What's the take? Do you watch it? Yeah. Talking about the umbrella cat, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I watched it, I enjoyed it. But yeah, you have those agents, and they're they're more fleshed out in the in the show than they are in the comics, and um, you just you just get a, a fun alternate experience, and that kind of works with like The Walking Dead. Um, when the show came out, same thing, uh, people were just going nuts for it. Now it's a little different for both the show and and the comics mm-hmm. uh, for for different reasons, but uh, but for that, you know, there's that that synergy that was going on where. People are like, oh, well, I, maybe I can get some insight into what's going to go on, what's going to happen in the in the next season mm-hmm. or the next movie, and I think that that's more of what's going on when people buy certain stories and stuff. Because okay. like, because like when you know when Man of Steel came out, I mean that no one no one buys more Superman comics um, unless there's there's a reason on the comic side, right? Because everyone like knows a death who Superman or, is, yeah. yeah. But um, and then same with Batman, like. You know, Batman v Superman didn't. I mean, I can't track Dark Knight Returns sales on that because because it's loosely based off of that. But like, people are buying that anyway, so yeah. it's like I can't really track that. So, do you think the actual like storylines when they're lifted from the comic books increases the comic book yeah, awareness? Yeah, I, I say like, that. I know like, for me, when Civil War came out, I'd never read Civil War, but I went back and watched all that. of them. Yeah, yeah, Civil War was a thing. Um, Civil War two, people were like, "Oh," so like, "Well, it's a little different." <laughs> uh, you can try if you like. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. I think if there's a if they if Marvel decides they want to do a secret Im- invasion thing, I don't recommend um, people to, to jump to that to see what the scrolls are doing. But you know, but that, that MCU might have seems stuff. to be uh, content to do its own thing anyway. Yeah, but that's why you, they put a U on, which it. is smart. Yeah. yeah. So if they if they use a if they use the name of a storyline, that'll probably jump. But otherwise, I don't like at least for big two. But indie stuff. It's a whole different story. Yeah. So Deadly Class sells about the same at my store. Um, but like Happy sells about the same. I Zombie had a boost for their TV show. Um, but then even, oh, you know what, Green Arrow uh, for their for the Arrow show for yeah. a while, that actually had a boost and same with Flash. Um, nice. In their earlier seasons. But Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so uh, before the show, we were going to bounce off of uh, the state of the industry, which we kind of covered with the numbers here, looking at uh, an uptrend generally, but you know we seem to f- keep making less year after year. And an article from Bleeding Cool seems to place the blame on free comic book day. And you seem to have maybe some feedback on that. Yeah, so I mean, that article came out before the year, right? Yeah, it was in, in December. Right? Yeah. So um, free comic book day, you know, it's it's a good way to get people in your store. Mm-hmm. You know, Did you make it out for free comic book day? I did not. Okay. <laughs> and that's, you know, and that's, that's, that's the hard part, you know, is getting people in your store. And so you, you train customers or patrons to be like, well, you know, the, the first Saturday in May – come to our store you can get free stuff the 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 next part is getting them to stay in your store long enough to look around in your store and buy and actually buy something and i think like even for this year for me i this is the first time where i've run out of comics um for free comics but but the sales didn't translate to that though um i did i did i made less money this year than I did last year is like fourteen percent drop wow. for the day. Yeah, um, and there are other, and there are factors, there are local factors that go on to that. You know, um, another another comic shop opened up and got some uh, retailer uh, celebrities, for lack of a better term, to to come in and help them out. Um, which I, you know, you're talking about uh, apotheosis. Yeah, yeah. You know, with uh, with John and Jim when we're going over there. Yeah, and they, and they have, you know, I think everyone who was at the at that Del Mar Star Clipper. Um, they all have uh, a clout about them mm-hmm. that can kind of dictate where people go, um, or well, not to be like you know they're like like fans or whatever like that, but like if you see if you see where some are, you're gonna go and check them out. So there are customers. I've heard that, customers talk about following Star Clipper yeah, because of their own personal history with it. Right. Yeah. And so there, I have I have customers at the Wizards Wagon that came with me, or you know sure. they followed me. And then there's some with like uh, uh, customers that, that Kia had um, from the old Star Club to the new Star Club that stayed with him. And then there are an amount of people who who were so upset about what went down um, when when the Del Mar Star Club closed that when John and Jim made their uh, announcements, people went with them. Hmm. And it makes sense. And everyone kind of has their own crowd and audience. And so, but but they went real big. And they had a they had a really really good turnout. But then we also have uh, anime SDL, which which suddenly oh, right. you know is now happening the same weekend as for free the next three for years. Next, yeah, yeah, and it's like that's where that's where that's where all the cosplayers are. You right. know, they normally they we would be able to get some in. They'd be like, hey, take your picture with, with Spider Man or mm-hmm. Boba Fett or whatever. Now they're all anime characters at SDL, and it's like, and it's a big deal for St. Louis. So and I, and I'm not I'm not um, I don't fault anyone for wanting to go there, but it's it's a it's a conflict of interest sure. for the people that for our demographics for the people who spend money in in the shops. Well, now they're spending the money at the convention instead. Right. So we end up getting more more people who are just here for the free stuff, and here for the fun, the bands and the and the the signings and stuff like that mm-hmm. instead. So which is which is still fine because you're still getting people to come in and store. Right. But if we had, but if the comic shops had their own day, didn't have to compete for their for a shared demographic on that day, well, things would be a little better. Right. So yeah, that's unfortunate. I wish there was a solution to that, but we're gonna have to deal with it for the next right. three and years. And then, and then, yeah. So then, getting into free comic book day stuff, it's also about the offerings as well. Um, yeah. For the last few years, DC has just put out reprints. Um, or previews of stuff that's already out. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> Image did Spawn number one, which was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Spawn number one and, and Deadly Class, which is like a dollar on the shelf anyway. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and it's like so you get stuff where it's not even it's not even new stuff. There are so many reprints this year. There's a Vampirella book, although that wasn't a reprint, but that's but like but it was an old story. And you have um, before you used to have where people would launch their new event on the Free Comic Book Day. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you know, like Blackest Night was like that, and um, was it? Yeah, it was like that, and then. Uh, and then you know Marvel still did their thing. There's just this Carnage story that's coming out, and they did a, they did a launch for that. Um, even Ninja Turtles did a thing, so IDW with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, you also just have stuff that's that's like comics that don't come out anymore. There's a Bob's Burgers special, and it hasn't had a comic in a while. <laughs> um, 
and then there's there's so the, the free comic yeah. books have had nothing uh, to do with well a lot less to do with current series right and generating actual sales and interest in the industry right really okay and I so can see that, that so that also doesn't help because if because if no one's getting excited for what's coming out right then, you know like there's no reason to go back to the shop right yeah so that's a bummer yeah so I so I get what the guy's saying. But it's not. But I mean, you can't just put it on free comic book day because yeah, while it's while it's on the publishers to 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 help drum up interest. Because mm-hmm. I mean, why are you publishing comics if if you're not gonna try to get people to buy your comics? It can't just fall on the retailers either to 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 find out ways to to do more to do take that extra step. Like like some companies, like even like Marvel gets a lot of a lot of crap for a lot of stuff, but they'll send us posters that we can put up in the store. For stuff that's coming out, mm-hmm. um, and Dark Horse does that too, um, but not everyone. And Image will do like collage posters and stuff like that. And there's more stuff that, that we can put in the store to entice people. Like that helps, but but yeah, but but Free Comic Book Day is kind of like the the kickoff to to a new season of comics, I guess, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. And when it's when it's lackluster, it, it does it does affect that. So, Tech, um, you you seem to gravitate. St- Strictly towards characters that you know, right? Pretty much. I think most people, That's general not... public, is like that. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, why are we telling the same stories of characters that are sixty years old? You right. Know? Yeah. So I, I'm wondering. Um, so I, I I only really read big two stuff when something big happens, or if it's Sean Murphy's involved, because I'm a fanboy. Sure. But like, you know, um, I stayed away from. S- Civil War Two or Secret Wars Two or one of them because people just were generally poo pooing it. But uh, that like, was that was us. Yeah, Secret War. Wait, no, not that. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, but yeah, people were mad about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I personally am more interested in uh, not independent, but other other stuff. Uh, do you see yourself ever? Seeing something on the shelf that's not a character you don't know and, and grabbing it, or it just doesn't interest you at all. I don't know. Um, I think you're like that because you're in the field yeah. and you create, and like you're an sure, independent sure. comic creator. So of course you're going to gravitate towards independent comics. Like yeah. Me being into music, and, you know, making music, I I will listen to an independent artist and sure. nerd out over their shit. Right. You know, faster than someone who only listens to the radio. Right. You know, like earlier I said, I'm surface level. You know, like, <laughs> but honestly, you know it. I read your stuff, you know? Yeah. So it's possible, <laughs> you know, like it's definitely possible that I can see something and, and gravitate yeah. towards it. I just see uh, a crazy dragon on the cover or some sci-fi shit in a spaceship or, or what's uh, outer darkness or something. Yeah. I see that. And I go, Oh, I need that. You know, something's got the right premise. I got to grab it. And that just doesn't seem to happen with the big two for me. It's, you know, we're on issue 75 of Spider-Man and Peter Parker's dead and Doc Ock took over and whatever and stuff like that. I'm just like, well, I don't know. It seems hard to get into. Like well, if you don't I catch the start of the me wave, too. right? Like I think everyone's like that. Yeah. Like I'm even scrolling through Marvel Unlimited. If it's something like SU fifty, I'm like, well, I don't know what's going on. You know, like I need to get it from the beginning. Yeah. For, to to really become a fan of something of a series. Even with Saga, I stayed I stayed current for a long time. I think it was around like twenty six issues. So I've got issues like one through twenty six. Sure. In my box, and I fell behind. And then as soon as they got to like volume eight or something, I'm like, ugh. I can't, you know, I just don't, it's a lot of reading sure. and, I, and I never wanted to read. I read a few issues of, uh, walking dead, but at no I point gonna, I was did mention, I ever want to read 125 issues. Of, I was going to mention walking dead next yeah. because the show comes out. I see the first episode. I'm all in. I go back and get one through 34. Right. And you know, read all of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. what about all a hundred and what are they up to? 140 or something now? Right. Uh, they're, no, they're, they're getting close to, um, 200. Yeah, you're getting close to 200. Yeah, I think I stopped reading at like 130. Did you? Yeah. Like 190 man, that's a lot of reading, man. It goes quick, I know, but man, that's a lot. No, but it's so it's so good. I mean, I think that's the way I'm going to be a fan. You know, like of somebody of something of a new entity is if I somehow consume it mm-hmm. in another way, like Umbrella Academy. I never heard of ah, Umbrella Academy before, yeah. but then that will pique my interest. And since I'm a person, now you're a fan. Yeah, yeah, I'm a type of person. Like if I like, when I was a kid, Jurassic Park the movie came out. 
I went to the bookstore and bought Michael Crichton's yeah. Jurassic Park sure. and read it. What the hell is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I loved it. Yeah, I, that's the type of person I am. Scary. Like, this, yeah, all that's why I read that. I Am Legend, because, oh, this movie's coming right. out. I love zombies, even though it wasn't based on zombies. I went and bought the book before the movie came out. I'm that type of person where I want to see the source material. So that's I think that's how I'm going to consume new new comic books. Is it, like Even if someone like, hey, you know, like you should, hey, this is something you might like, you know? Mm-hmm. Shit, everybody loves Rocket and, and Groot now. Damn. Right. How oh. many people knew who that was? Well, now, shit, let's, let's keep it real, though. Like, how how amazing... How many people loved Captain America before the MCU? Yeah. Like... The same with Iron Man. The same with Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing at, same, at Johnny Brock's was probably Wolverine and Batman. And that's yeah, it, probably. Yeah. Spider-Man, I guess. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, like... I don't know. Yeah. It goes hand in hand. Do you um, offhand know... If this is even quantified in your in your numbers at the store, uh, big two versus everything else as far as sales, um, I look at it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, yeah, DC and Marvel kind of dominate, um, but uh, Image falls right behind that, mm-hmm. and then depending on what's going on, it'll be something like Boom or IDW. Right. Um, just kind of yeah, just kind of depends on on what's going on and where the people are what's being produced for folks so um, the big two are always just but yeah they're always going to be at the top but yeah. not but not dominating not like they used to i think okay. uh, two years ago marvel i had a significant drop in, in marvel comics which is slowly building back up but like they were doing so many ending uh so many comics and starting new things and like a lot of bad properties and stuff like that and it's just yeah. and well then, then we got a surge of of a popularity and knowledge about all these properties now like umbrella academy and walking yeah. dead and saga and like, I can talk to these kids in my comic class who don't necessarily read comics, which is weird. What are you doing in my class? But they, they know a lot of those big oh, titles. And that's the so. thing. Graphic novel sales um, like are dwarfing uh, single-issue sales. And, and the graphic novel sales, are, those are those, those strong ones. Yeah. So you're getting – so, I, like, my image stuff, that's, that's my number one for graphic novels. Image graphic novels. Um, hmm. Followed by, how do they know to buy them though? Do they buy the single issues, maybe a couple, and then they go, I'll wait till the trade comes out? So sometimes they have like uh, these dollar issues that are like the first issue, yeah, and you can check out, and then they'll be like, Hey, if you like this, buy this. Um, a big thing that Image used to do for a long time, and they still do for some books, but you know, the first volume is $9.99, regardless yeah, 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 of whatever. And that's you know, when, when the average uh graphic novel price is like sixteen ninety nine or right. something like that, ten dollar books, not bad, yeah. So, right. and then yeah, then people just we sell them and you know like oh, I'm looking for something I've never read a comic before or whatever so I'll read this it's weird because I have publishers telling me that trades are really hard to sell from, so uh, yeah I mean <laughs> it's kind of like has to be established the people in the store have to like it right and that's how it goes I have a non-comic book question not really question but how do you feel about Funko Pops <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> they uh um, how do they sell do they bring people in they're they're almost a necessity um, mm. I don't necessarily like. I, like I, I have a few. I have like I have like nine of them over over uh, oh, cool. eight years. Mostly, um, you know, like uh, I, if there's a Jason Voorhees or something, I'll find that. I think I have like three of them now. And um, I was trying to find his mom. I can't find his mom. <laughs> um, but that's, that's that's that sounds that, that would be expensive. Yeah, the yeah, I'm not even gonna try because it's like I think it was like a San Diego San Diego Comic Con exclusive or something like that. So, <clears> um, and then like. Uh, you know, if I see a Cyclops, which is, I think there's only two, so I yeah. have one of them. Um, it's stuff like that, like stuff that I that I think is interesting to kind of look at, I'll buy for myself personally. But yeah, in the store, like, you know, people come in and say, hey, you guys have any pops? I was like, yeah. It's like the whole thing. this, that wall yeah. over there? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we almost, we had a discussion because uh, cause the, the, the price of them, uh, retail or the cost of them went up. And we're like, well, we want to keep uh, selling them. It's like, well, yeah, you know, because people are gonna buy them, so you don't um, turn people away. And yeah, it's and we should not drop a product that sells well <laughs> right. because it, it went up. We just need to figure it out some other way. Yeah. What What about like limited editions and exclusives and stuff like that? Do you got? We you yeah, get a couple of those. Yeah, we we'll we'll order enough to get chases sometimes, and we, we price them up. Um, everyone does. Uh, except for <laughs> except for GameStop because GameStop they can't they have to be locked in. So if you want a chase, you know, you wait around GameStop and you might be able to get one. <laughs> but um, it's very rare that I'll go to a store and buy a chase. 
Yeah, it's just, it's not it's it's very generally rare. not worth it to do that yeah. unless you just, just really need difficult. it. Yeah, I think I've only um, done it actually once. Yeah, because um, I needed it for Rick and Morty, but I have like <laughs> four hundred fun codes. So yeah, I collect. That's a lot. It's a lot. But it's not. But it's not. The it's most, not. But yeah, it's, it's, it's like, not. Technically, it's not even close. To, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there's people with t- thousands of them. Right. Yeah. So four hundred is a small collection, but more than the average person. Yeah. Respect. It looks good. It does. And pictures. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So we'll we'll get those. We'll I order exclusive. They're like diamond exclusives. So like there's certain like like Batman pops and stuff that we just mm-hmm. get, or like Lobo or Bloody Conan the Barbarian, stuff like that. Um, so do you guys, you guys normally pick which ones you want to sell? Yes. Yeah. That's we, awesome. We, um, if we can get them, because usually uh, there's, there's a pre-order process where sometimes, sometimes you just don't get them. But, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, we usually are able to, to pick and choose what we want. Um, I can tell when I go release. to the store that, like, it's if, it feels curated. Like, yeah. you know, like you go to other places to look for fun calls. And it, yours... Guy selection seems like it's a specific type, not not necessarily like a you know small, sure. but like I know that you guys you know yeah we're gonna have we're gonna try to have certain genres or yeah. whatever and stick with that because like we can't because like I was gonna use the Golden Girls example but those sold well um, <laughs> but like we can't just get everything like we can't do like all the music pops or, mm-hmm. or the or the the sports pops and stuff like that like we'll we'll occasionally get in if there's like a Cardinals or a blues player or something like that we'll get that in. Um, I'll order in like because um, sometimes when I'm ordering comics, I can get certain pops that uh, that my coworker he does all the other stuff. He usually gets most of those where he can't get. And I'll be like, well, let me get this Biggie pop, or these um, you know, uh, let me get this, let me get this this weird thing, you mm-hmm. know, because someone because I know someone will buy it. Um, Power Ranger pops. We had like a we had one signed by um. But the original Black Ranger, those are sitting in the store. That's awesome. Um, but the box was beat up, so no one went to buy it for, like, for like a year. That sucks. Finally, someone bought it. But like no, uh, a real person, would, a real collector would have bought it. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's because yeah, we got it. We got it in a con because uh, one of the other guys he he goes to conventions and he'll he'll trade for stock and stuff like that. So we'll get stuff that that you can't get anymore as well. So uh, it went away. What are you trying to show me? Time. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're at a night. We're at a. We did it. We made it. Uh, so what I want to see uh, is a public conception shift where comics aren't just for kids. Sure. I, I wanted to talk about demographics and readership, you know, wh- who's buying them. Kids, obviously, uh, you know, kids or adults or whatever. But what I want to see is what you see in Japan, which is where you go on the train and everybody's reading a manga. Mm-hmm. Because comics in Japan is for all ages. And I'd love to see a Metro stop here in St. Louis and have everybody reading a comic because comics are so big that everybody's reading them. Uh, yeah, pay attention. <laughs> can't, <laughs> can't be, be reading a comic. Can't be reading a comic. Yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah. link. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Yeah. Like uh, Starbucks or something, you know, you don't, right. in yeah. the West County, you don't have to pay attention. But like, uh, I just want to see more out there and maybe I'll read more comics in public to try to just help that out. But um, that's what I'd like to see. But um, I'd I, say there's a growth of that. I mean, I, I do see sometimes I'll see people. I'll go in a movie theater or something. And I'll see someone reading a comic. Nice. Uh, it's not even a comic book movie. Um, yeah. Or kids uh, will have you know, we use comics to sell. Like, hey, you know, if your kid doesn't like reading prose, you still want them to read like right. you know, a comic. And so right. you'll see a lot of kids reading, you know, kind of easier comics to to comprehend. And and it's it's happening, but it's but it's a slow yeah it's, it's a pretty slow, slow. yeah. We're gonna do uh, quick MCU predictions, phase four. Otherwise, we got time for that or no? I mean, we can bust that out real quick. You got any ideas? Uh, based off of what they've announced. Yeah, sure. Man, I don't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know they're talking about it, uh, Eternals and yeah. Shang Chi and man, I don't know I don't know what that means. Um. <laughs> Because they're, they're doing some weird cosmic stuff. They're doing, they're doing uh, th- this cool like karate, you know, kung fu stuff. But it's also like they can't use the the Netflix guys anymore. So like, right. I can see a lot of those those street uh, level guys aren't necessarily going to be a part of that. And then well, they we can don't know. bring in a new. You know, they can write the story where that guy's gone. They brought in a new Iron Fist yeah. or whatever. And so you have that going on, and then and then there's still it's going to be a while before the mutants show up. Uh, yeah, I, think, I hear that's going to be got, phase five. I think we got like ten years before the mutants. <sighs> ten? I, really? I think five or ten not. years. Well, okay. I feel like I feel like at the quickest you might see like one pop. You know, you, you might even see like like technically Namor is a mutant, right? And they kind of 
I don't know if the, if it's actually a tease or not, but like an end game. You mm. know, sure, he's like, oh, there's an earthquake in it. Yeah. It's like, what do you do? Ah, it's not, you it's, do it's nothing. water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that could be Atlantis thing. So you can get the start of, of that. Um, I mean, Namor's not really associated as a mutant, though. But, um, mm. but you know, you might get a piece here. You might hear about Charles Xavier, you know, somewhere else, Magneto, you know, stuff like that. Um, see, same with, like, Fantastic Four. Like, you could so probably get Doctor Fantastic Four right now? Disney. Okay. As of as of that deal, okay, so, that's part of it. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I think the only people, the only properties that Disney doesn't fully own is is Spider Man, Hulk, and Namor. I think Na- Hulk and Namor are Universal. Um, Whoa! And uh, and Spider Man's still Sony. So right, holding on to that one. And anyway, who knows where Venom's going to pop up? Venom and Carnage. So you got a multiverse now. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So you know that could be the other thing. You could you could see some characters who have died come back as a an ultimate version sure. of themselves or yeah. stuff like that so heroes never really die right right cool cool what else well my predictions you sure my predictions? now pretty much everything uh he said <laughs> um okay uh nova sure. nova cool. uh captain britain is that his name yeah, I heard. so when they when that? they snap, did they he bring back no, uh, no. So Thanos just outright destroyed the Nova homeworld, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, but that doesn't yeah, mean that one person couldn't survive. Yeah, Richard Ryder. I don't think they've um, they haven't introduced him yet. So right. you could always you could have like you know one last Nova helmet or I something. They, I think they mentioned him in Endgame. Did they? I think so. Neat. A sight. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, Possibilities. Uh, Namor is what I really hope because that's like the first comic book I ever read in my yeah. life. Um, that's Marvel's, definitely Marvel's OG character. I yeah. would love a Namor versus Black Panther sequel. That would just make my life. Um, I mean, that that will definitely happen. I, I think. I think it has really? to. It has to. Yeah, Such a I, good storyline. Well, shit. I mean, with with Okaye talking about the earthquake. Yeah. Like they sort of drew yeah. the dotted line like right there. Like it's there if they want right. to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Okoye. Sorry, I said it Okoye. Wrong. Yeah, you did. But yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? I don't want to see Fantastic Four. See, I, I kind of do, but <laughs> the, but not as their own movie, just kind of like in the in, in a the Hulk background. Way. Yeah, like you Man, see, oh, they're in the Baxter Building, they're doing dimensional riffs and whatever. Yeah. Like it would be cool if you saw like in this Homecoming movie, or not Homecoming, Far From Home. Uh, this guy we talked to Reed Richards about, you mm. know, whatever. So Mysterio's telling the truth or not yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know. So that could, that could be cool. That would be cool. Um, I think human. I think Human Torch could hang. He'd fit right in. Yeah, he'd fit. Yeah, and it could be Chris Evans because he's he's, <laughs> not, he's not Cap anymore. So he, he can go back. Um, <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> what else do I want to see? Um, I want to. I would love to see. I don't. I excited about the Black uh, Widow movie. That would be. That's cool. A um, little sad about how that played out, but um, I wouldn't mind if we're gonna do a prequel, a Black Order movie. I know that's like hard to imagine and probably would I, never happen, but that would that would make I, me happy. I'd watch it or a show or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I yeah, think the like shows gonna, yeah. the shows are going to change everything anyway. Like it's going to change our expectations of what's possible. And it's actually going to probably speed them up on introducing new characters in this in the actual cinematic sure. universe. Sure. Yeah. Sure. A Bucky um, Sam mo- movie would work. Yeah. But now it's going to be a show. Right. Yeah. A Wanda Vision. A Loki. You know, yeah. and, and a Loki. So I guess he's alive, huh? Not that he's well, dead. But he, one, of, one of him stole the well, Yeah, one of them's alive. Yeah. So we're going to follow that, you think? I mean, probably. I, I mean, mean if, you get another timeline of, like, what he does messing around and and from this from that 2012, um, see how he changes things. Maybe he does he, he redoes Thor 2 differently mm. uh, and doesn't fake his death or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it wasn't the 616... Uh, Loki that died, or yeah, you do a switcheroo, yeah, yeah, different Lokis died at different times. Oh yeah. God, maybe they, maybe they were all different Lokis. Yeah, that could be a whole other thing. Too, yeah, you know, mischief and all that. So and he actually like, did die multiple times. It's just it's <laughs> like you know, even in the comics, you know, he at times he's aware that he's in a comic. Um, he doesn't always really. He doesn't always deal with it, but like he, you know, him and like Deadpool and sometimes okay. She Hulk, they'll be like, you know, in a comic. <laughs> but don't worry, you know. Don't worry about she, it. She, she Hulk yeah. is so what? Is she genius? 
Uh, no, no, she's, no, just, she's a just a lawyer. Yeah. Right, right. Apparently a lawyer, yeah. 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 Um, all right, well, anything else? No, ma'am. All right. Do a quick uh, uh, promotion moment. You guys want to talk about anything? You got a new track today. Like a what? Did you put on a new track today? No. I thought you did. What new was that graphic you put up? That no, that's a oh, the, that's a, a project I'm working on. It comes out June 27th. You're announcing your new project. Got yeah, it. Okay. yeah. It's called 1981. Funk You. And it's a funk project. Dope. I think I'm going to go for about six to eight songs, something like hey, that. Hey, nice. Uh, still going to call it an EP. Um, yeah, so that's coming out June 27th on my birthday. Awesome. Yep. And uh, the Grooveland EP is still growing, still getting good, good streams, decent sales. So we're still pushing that. You got the, uh, the merch store up techsupreme.net and um, go buy something. I think I might. Uh, my book's coming along. I'm on page three. Uh, I just wrote in a suplex. That should make you happy. There you go. Yep. It's an automatic one star. That's right. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we we moved out uh, a big chunk of the book so that we could have more action. And uh, our chick's sort of a beast, so she, she suplexes somebody. So around page 18, you guys have a suplex to look forward to. Excited. Yes, I'm very excited. Um, so yeah, I'm just working on that. Uh, what about you? Uh, I mean, we're always doing events in the store. So, um, you know, we got June 15th. We're going to have uh, Ink and Drink come in for... A new release? If, I guess for like the last three... Oh really? Uh, we, have, big... we haven't had, we haven't had a new book in uh, in a while, and I think that's like we didn't have the. I think the last one we had was a crime book, the second crime wow. book. I think so. We're gonna have a bunch of those, but plus the new one. They should put um, some money into into that. When is that? June, you said? June fifteenth. They need to put the money in produ- in promoting that, so we can actually make a party out of it. It's called yeah. Ink and Drink, for God's sake. It should be a party. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, you know, uh, I know you used to get free beer and stuff. I don't know, that could still happen. I don't know. Well, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I guess past that, uh, kicking off from from off of that, the loop is doing this 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 kind of week of whatever. Each day is going to have a theme thing. So hmm. for a few of those days, we're going to be doing stuff as well. Okay. Um, leading to the next, the following Saturday will be like a like an art day. So. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Exciting. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. Well, thank you for coming to the show. Yeah, no problem. We appreciate you ha- having invite. you here. It's f- fun comic book conversations. And uh, thank you for listening uh, to the 60 Minute Shit Show or 60 Minute Talk Show if you're on Apple. <laughs> and like, subscribe, share with your friends. Go buy a comic book. Go buy a comic book. Read it in public. Don't, yeah, just do it. Yeah, yeah. share Probably it with your friends. It. Tell them it's not for kids anymore. It's for everyone. Yeah. 60 Minute Shit Show. Pe- See you next time. Pete. Uh, peace. Peace. Peace.